morning one more time and we bless the lord for the opportunity granted us by the holy spirit to be gathered in his presence and as we proceed in this blessed service this morning in today is day two as we have been reminded of our consecration uh 10 days consecration within the 100 days fasting and rituals unto dominion um, our mother would like to exhort and encourage us or rather remind us a few nudges to resound into our soul our spirit uh, the basic requirement for a life of excellency i'm turning the table to mom to hear what the lord is reminding us on the requirement for excellence briefly she's going to minister life unto us i will receive your exhortation ma'am brethren grace to you and peace i welcome you all to today's sunday service teaching where we shall be able to study on the excellency of god and our layout this morning for the bible study is We'll first of all look at the definition of excellency then we'll look at what is the excellency of god we are going to look at the keys for excellency and thereafter we shall conclude so once again i welcome you all in jesus name so let's look at the definition of excellency it's defined as the quality of being outstanding distinctive powerful or extremely good what is the excellency of god god is exceptionally excellent in every single way his character is excellent his word is excellent everything he does is excellent and outstanding surely this is why the psalmist calls us to praise him according to his excellent greatness we find this in psalms 150 verse 2. psalms 82 6 says i have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the Most High. So, since we are gods, and the Most High is our Father, and He is excellent in all things, then we, His children, are also excellent, or should thrive to be excellent in every way. God is not just excellent in His nature, but also in His doings. He is excellent within and without. And that is his expectation for our lives too. His excellent spirit dwells in us all. But it must not remain at that level. We by his grace need to manifest the excellency of our Father in us to his glory. Hallelujah. Blessed be the living God. However, this can be achieved by mastering the protocols of ascension and dissension appearing in the holy of holies to get the exact word from god procedure to get the procedure and pattern in which to execute and get answers okay second peter 1 verse 3 seeing that his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellency Hebrews 8, 6 says, But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry, by as much as he is also the mediator of a better covenant, which has been enacted on better promises. With the characteristic of excellency of our Father, we are his children. So we as his children are expected to equally be clothed up with his excellency. In his excellency, he came to our aid to save us and redeem us from all unrighteousness. And now that the excellent job was done for us, it is imperative, as Luke 12, 48 put it that, from everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. So let's look at the keys to excellency. How do we attain excellency? Since we have establish that we serve a god of excellency and we are called for excellency excellency should be an attitude that touches every area of our lives thus 
with their and thus with true excellency we are to dedicate our lives fully to everything we do as if we are working for the lord therefore let's look at how we can attain this excellency by god's grace or rather let's look at the keys for excellency let's look at joseph in the bible joseph is one among many in the bible who excelled in whatever he did and whatever and wherever he found himself how did joseph then excel let's look at genesis 39 which gives us a glimpse of five qualities joseph possessed that enabled him to excel and to excel indeed these qualities were the foundation for his growing influence while serving potiphar after being falsely accused of attempted rape while serving in the prison and as a second in command in egypt so the first key that we are going to look at is relationship with god genesis 39 um, verse 2 the lord was with joseph and he prospered we see that one common theme woven over and over throughout joseph's story is that god was with joseph and things went very well with him god is with us if we are with him james 4:8 says to us come near to god and he will come near to you other versions say draw near to god and he shall draw near to you wash your hands you sinners and purify your hearts you double minded this um verse resonates very well um you know with the instructive spiritual cleansing that we have been taught to execute by uh, the holy spirit through apostle david longe for 10 days as an initial and very cardinal ritual to be performed um to be performed during the 100 days of fasting and rituals unto dominion so um the first 10 days are for cleansing and then we follow up with other procedures but obviously the 10 days are very cardinal you know as they are uh they will open the spiritual gateways for the remaining days of the fasting and rituals and to dominion so we see um that joseph's pure relationship with god served as the firm foundation of his relation of his leadership and excellency he was totally yielded to the perfect will of god god's will for our lives is to be like him therefore i believe that we are called to be excellent in our relationship with god and from that will flow excellency in our jobs in our marriages and in all areas of our lives name it excellency begins with god himself we now move and look at the second key to excellency which is management skills excellency is developed in the details if you do the little things diligently every day to improve excellency becomes attainable it's all about implementation plan to be excellent and then take every step necessary to fulfill that plan the third key to excellency is people skills people relationship people management joseph had god given relationship relational skills which put him on good terms with people and fostered relational equity with others in positions of influence theodor roosevelt among others a writer who served as the 26th president of the united states from 1901 to 1909 once said and i quote the most important single ingredient in the formula of success is knowing how to get along with people joseph mastered that skill for example the bible in genesis 39 verse 4 says that he meaning he potiphar uh, became very fond of joseph and made him his personal aide he put him in charge of all his personal affairs turning everything over to him and when joseph was in prison god put him on good terms with the head jailer glory be to god so we look at the fourth key to excellency which is unwavering personality or unwavering character and whether in connotes firm steadfast steady and bendable 
unfaltering, unshakable, resolute. Joseph had a strong character. He repeated opportunity to sleep with Potiphar's wife, but he resisted every one of them and kept himself holy. He kept, he kept himself pure. He kept himself righteous, a vessel and to honor. Joseph never let the devil rule his heart, nor become his master. He never for once gave chance for the devil and their demons to get hold of him and manifest. He did not break the hedge to permit the serpent to bite. Genesis 39 verse 7 says, After a while, his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, Come to bed with me. Genesis 39 10, And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. So your character will determine what people associate with your name. Although Potiphar was furious, he had always associated Joseph's name with character and integrity. Perhaps in the depth of his soul, Potiphar even knew that Joseph would have been innocent of the um, charge leveled against him. So while still on this point, let's investigate on how someone can develop a Christian character unto excellence. Romans 5 verse 3 to 4. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. Joseph, throughout his life, went through this cycle, and a true Christian character was produced out of him. Let's look at the fifth key to excellency, which is perseverance. Perseverance is not giving up. It is persistence and tenacity. The effort required to do something and keep doing it till the end, even if it's hard, even if one meets hurdles. One thing that pulls one from the crisis of life is having the right perspective in the Lord. And hear me well, only in the Lord. Passing through life is not easy. We all go through tough times, but our perspective pulls us through. Biblically, our perspective is the lens at which we view life and most importantly, God's role in our lives. Our perspective is formed by what we know is true. As Christians, this wisdom should come only from God's word. We see that brother Joseph's ability to maintain the right perspective allowed him to finish well. Having perspective enables or rather having the right godly perspective enables us to successfully navigate tests, trials, and seemingly unfair circumstances. It gives us the ability to see God at work when it would be when it would have been easier to jump ship or jump camp. And when Joseph's brothers knelt before Joseph, trembling with fear, ultimately fulfilling his dream, Joseph allowed perspective to win. To win the day. Genesis 50, 20 to 21 says, You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then, don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. We see God honoring perspective at work, godly perspective being honored. In the world today, we see that few leaders have this, but it's a game changer in leadership and forms a great attribute of excellency. So we move on to conclusion. So in conclusion, I admonish that whatever you are doing, do it as if you are doing it unto the Lord. Be it raising a family, working, studying, or ministering, God has called you for excellency. Excellency does not compare itself to others. Instead, in our quest to excellency, only benchmark our performance against ourselves because not only does God judge us by our harvest, but much more by what has been given to us. Luke 12, 48 um, tells us that from everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. So don't look at outward, at the outward to measure your excellency. 
Instead, look inward and compare your growth to where you were in the past. Galatians 6, 4 says, Each one should test his own actions. Then he can take pride without comparing himself to somebody else. If Joseph can push through this difficult, these difficulties and fulfill the dream of his life, it is possible for all of us to excel in every area of our lives. Commit your life, family, career, spiritual life, ministry, and business to God. Tell God, I am not going to be mediocre, but I am going to tap on your favor and work for excellency. Let holiness, purity, and right standing with our maker be unshaken. I thank you all for listening. I pray for us all that holiness, that purity, and righteousness be what will be known of us as character, the character of excellency. May God be with you all. May the Lord God Almighty make it easier for us all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Awesome, Lisa. We thank God for this powerful reminder. You need to consecrate yourself. You see, it's coming out again, like Joseph example she gave us. We need to yield ourselves completely to the Lord and let the Lord know that we are not going to bow or compromise Him in our lives in every way. And then you need also to be diligent and consistent in doing that which is good because you shall reap if you fail not um, focus commitment dedication and excellent people management utilization of your skills utilization of the gifts and the grace of god upon your life all of these culminate together with every other thing that you've been taught on how to activate the spirit of excellence in your life and um, and god is going to be glorified but most importantly again in the spirit of what is happening in our midst right now consecration is the foundation of excellence all right god bless you mom we appreciate your ministry thank you for this great exhortation in jesus name our consecration journey with the lord this morning and i am trusting that the lord himself will begin to clean us up deeper and deeper every day we shall be thoroughly and completely be ready as vessels unto honor in jesus name what is consecration what is consecration romans chapter 12 verse 1 to 2 whatever version of the bible you are using i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto god which is your reasonable service any other service is unacceptable and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may be able to prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of the Lord. So we are trying to define consecration again this morning. We gone far yesterday. It is to give your heart, which is now your subconscious mind, completely to the Lord so much more that nothing unrighteous have a place in you so we established yesterday and continuing today the power and the purpose of consecration what is it what does it mean to be consecrated it means to be committed to do only the will of the father that is consecration Romans 6 verse 13 Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness This is consecration uh, would you then be able to say that you are consecrated to the Lord? Would you be able to say that your leg, your hands, 
your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your vocal cord are exclusively instruments of God? If the answer is no, then make sure it becomes exclusively the instrument of God within these seven, uh, within these ten days. And this is to remind you again that by this day seven, we have a ritual of giving to the poor. And I want to encourage you to start preparing your gift for the poor. You know, as we have been told, according to Isaiah 58, that you can never have a successful fast if you do not alleviate the burdens of others and if you do not minister to the poor. So we are giving you opportunity to understand the principles, the keys of the kingdom, the rituals that delivers results so that you stop playing games as Christians. You must be an applier. You must be applying the keys and the principles for you to get results. It is not just by mouth that I am a Christian. No. There are principles to apply. You can never have a successful fast without ministering to the needy. My name is Apostle Ambassador David Longe, the lead pastor of Jesus Global Ecclesia. I'm sent by God with the gospel of the kingdom to raise for him an army of a holy nation, holy nation, consecrated nation, with the wisdom and the power of God to subdue the devil and to enforce the will of God on earth while fostering the unity of the body of Christ and accelerating the return of the Lord Jesus Christ and dominating in five cardinal areas where God called men into politics, into business, into professional and career excellence. And all women must be empowered as custodians of the destiny of their husband and that of their husband and to raise for him five-fold ministers and supporting ministers who we trailblaze and as frontline soldiers of Christ in the dominion of Christ on earth through us. And that is why the Lord has brought you to be empowered to discover your purpose and destiny in God, the giftings of God in your life, and to empower you to fulfill that purpose. Glory to God. So consecration is the total yieldedness of your soul, your spirit, and your body to God exclusively and of course he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit the day you gave your life to Jesus Christ God already sent the spirit of his son into your heart and the Holy Ghost cannot dwell in an unholy place which means your spirit is holy already unto the Lord but your soul needs to be yielded completely to the Lord and already you know and you've been taught that the body is a victim of who controls the soul and so in this regard, you need to understand and know that you need to yield your soul, which is your member in this regard, unto the Lord, your conscious mind and your unconscious mind and your emotions that are all seated in your soul, all right? You need to dedicate all of these things as vessels of honor exclusively for the glory of God. Thank you, Jesus. Job 31, verse 1 to 4. Job 31 verse 1 to 4. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. Please follow me scripture by scripture. Open up your Bible and follow me closely. We are looking at consecration, the, the power and the purpose of consecration. Day 2 of our 100 days fasting and rituals. Job 31. Job 31, everybody, Job 31, verse 1 to 4. I made a covenant with my eyes. Why then should I think upon a maiden, a maid, a virgin? Why should I think upon a maid? Job is saying here, he has made a covenant. He has sworn to himself. I will not look upon, which means I will not think upon, I will not imagine upon, I will not conceive evil upon a maiden. Thank you, Jesus. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Job is showing you the secret of his explosive prosperity and the pride of God over him. Wherein God said in Job 1, Job 2, have you considered my servant, the one through whom I execute my will on earth? Why? What's the secret? Job said, I made a covenant with my eye. My eye is dedicated to the Lord, not to behold evil. 
and my my soul, my conscious mind, my unconscious mind, my subconscious mind are all dedicated not to imagine and conceive any evil. This was the secret of Prophet Job. Have you dedicated your body to the Lord? If so, no man can touch you anyhow as a young person, as a virgin, as married, or even single. You can't put into your mouth anything that is not glorifying God. Is your mouth, your tongue, are they consecrated to the Lord? Death and life is in the power of the tongue. What are the things that comes out of your tongue? What do you say with your mouth? Praise God forevermore. Thank you, Jesus. Would you do like Job did? Make a covenant with your eye, with your nose, with your hand, with your body, with your entire being, that you will not allow any part of your body to be given to the devil? Thank you, Jesus. Quickly, let me give you some of the benefits of consecration before we continue. When you are consecrated to the Lord as he desires of you, you become a vessel unto honor. You are ready, you are made for the master's use, and you are prepared unto every good works. It means God will now walk through you and walk in you and live in you indeed and manifest. You are becoming the body of the Holy Spirit on earth, and that is called the manifestation of the sons of God. In the same way Jesus Christ, it dwelt, it, it, the, the fullness of the Godhead bodily dwelt in him. That is how you will become. You will become a vessel of God. You will become a body that God can use to glorify himself on earth. It means your destiny will be flourishing. The power of God will move and walk extensively through you because there is no entrance for God to operate through you. That is in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself, make himself clean. I told you yesterday that consecration is your responsibility. He shall be vessel unto honor, sanctified, set apart, and ready for the use of the master himself, and prepared unto every good works. This was what happened to the Lord Jesus, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power after consecration. Who went about doing good? It is God that walketh in him, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Like mom told us in the exhortation this morning, the secret of Joseph was consecration. How can I do this thing and sin against God? Child of God, the foundation of God remains standing sure. God knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that ever calls upon the name of the Lord run away from iniquity. Iniquity is evil in the heart. Conceived imagination of evil. Run away from it. Run away from it. God, we, not, we, we have no use of you extensively glorious without consecration. Commit your entire being to, to the glory of God. No lie, no, no deceit will come out of your love. The Bible says, how many of you will love life and see many days? Let him show it out of good conversation and let him keep his lips from speaking lies, from speaking deceit. If you want to see a good life, stop lying. Stop deceiving. Hallelujah. Psalm 34 verse 12, What man is there, desired life and loved many days, that he may see good? Let him keep thy tongue from evil and your lips from speaking gals. Do you want a good life that God is ready to give to everyone that truly love him? What are we saying about consecration? What is this consecration thing all about? It's all about making sure you won't put on your body what will not glorify God. You won't wear things that does not glorify God. Whatever you put on this body, whatever comes out of this body is glorifying God. The way you dress, does it glorify God? Does it show that your body is consecrated to God, especially women? The way you are raising your daughters to dress, does it glorify God? It's not about fashion. It's about them making their lives available for God to use. You may be surprised. The reason why the Holy Ghost will never move in your life is the way you dress, is the way you talk. It's the way you imagine. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you glory this morning, Lord. So we are looking at the brief benefits of consecration. 
you become a house of God. Hallelujah. Matthew, you are prepared unto every good works. It means the Holy Ghost will find you useful for whatever it so desires. Your ministry will go to another level. God will be working in you on in that the power, the glory, the beauty of God will be manifested. And for everyone that is ever like that, God will reward them with greatness. God will reward them with blessedness. If they obey and serve me, they spend their days in pleasure and their years in prosperity. If you obey consecration and you make yourself available for God to walk through you, he will reward you with pleasure and prosperity. If your job is seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness, his righteousness is what he wants to see done on earth, what God has already conceived in his own subconscious mind and imagination, and he brought through his word to you by enemies, and now that is his righteousness. He want, if you are that man and woman that has made yourself so holy that God can bat his righteousness through you, he will reward you with greatness. He will reward you with pleasure. He will reward you with prosperity. The same way the wages of sin is dead. It's the same way the wages of doing righteousness is life. And the life we are talking about is life here and eternal life. And the life here is a life of blessedness, life of peace, life of joy, life of promotion, life of splendor, life of which it is summarized by Job, pleasure and prosperity. And Ecclesiastes told us by Solomon, the whole duty of man is to fear God and to keep his commandment. So child of God, consecration is inevitable and it's not something you do once, it's something you do every day of your life. You must come to that point where you are con totally consecrated to the Lord. That the Lord can use you at any time without you starting to say you want now to start consecrating again. You make consecration your daily continuous attitude. Your life is consecrated to God. Do you know there are things God will not allow you to say? Thank you Holy Spirit. When you are consecrated you become carrier of God's presence. And that's why you see, and the Lord was with Joseph, and the Lord was with Abraham, and the Lord was with Isaac, and the Lord is with Apostle David Longer, and the Lord is with you. The Lord cannot be with you when you are not consecrated. That's why some say, the Bible say, he said, I will shake myself like all the time. He knew not that the Lord was departed from him. Because Adam and Eve yielded themselves to the devil, God departed from them. They became naked. The glory and the presence of God left them because they, they were no longer consecrated to the Lord. The eye of the Lord is too pure to behold iniquity. Thank you, Jesus. Glory and honor to your name. Thank you, Jesus. So when you are consecrated, your life pleases God. You are that man and woman that is pleasing to God. Your destiny shall be fulfilled and you will flourish. Let me stop there on the benefits of consecration. We're still going to look at more. But let's turn it into a few more scriptures and see how much God is going to imbibe into us today with respect to consecration. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 13. To fear the Lord is to hate evil. And I already told you what it means to walk in the fear of God. It simply means you are loving God. It simply means you are loving God. Hallelujah to Jesus. Father, I bless your name. To fear God, to love God, is to hate him. Thou lovest righteousness and hates wickedness. Therefore, the Lord thy God has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellow. If you want increase of God's power, consecrate yourself. Stay consecrated. Stay unspotted from this world. And you will see the power of God multiply in your life. What is the fear of the Lord? To hate evil. I hate arrogant, pride, evil conduct, and perverse speech. You will realize from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What comes out of your mouth is a great revelation of who you are on the inside. Jesus Christ said, all evil proceed from the inside. And the moment you are able to conceptualize anything in your heart, in your heart, subconscious mind, it will be found in your mouth. 
the same way when you have conceived evil in your heart you will see you will say it that's why faith doesn't pray faith says so whatever you have believed that is conceived into your subconscious mind thought upon to the point of conceiving into your subconscious mind it means you have seen it with the eye of your spirit you don't pray about such things you say them and so you know that you have been living by faith working for the devil by the things you say and that's why jesus christ said by their words you shall know them by their fruit you shall know them and the fruit of what you conceive and planted in your heart is in your mouth so you see again the psalmist is telling us your your speech is a revelation of what's in your heart make a tree good and its fruit shall be good make a tree evil and its fruit shall be evil to god be the glory so if you want to be consecrated to the lord hate evil hate evil the way jesus hate evil hate evil thoughts hate evil imagination don't ever allow them to rest in your heart proverbs 3 verse 32 for the lord detests hates the perverse the perverse but he is a friend to the upright proverbs 11 1 and 20. let's take verse 1 dishonest scale are an abomination to the lord but an accurate weight is his delight are you cheating people are you an employer or you are in partnership with somebody and you are cheating people the bible says you are an abomination to the lord you see no matter what we are going to begin to list for you and we've been listening for you on ethics of christianity the character of god in you once you are able to settle the issue of consecration the rest becomes easy god can easily lead you the holy ghost can easily direct you the word of god will make sense to you you will fulfill someone not walking in the ways of not sitting in the seat of the scornful, not walking in the counsel of the ungodly you are not standing in the way of sinner once you have made up your mind and you have asserted yourself that you will be consecrated to the lord nothing of you by you in you out of you from you will defile then you are set for a glorious life holiness is not negotiable child of god proverbs 15 verse 8 the sacrifice of the wicked is detestable to the lord who is the wicked the, the unrighteous and so you are giving god a sacrifice because you you want certain things from him he doesn't see them because your heart is not pure before him but the prayer of the upright is his delight when you are consecrated to the lord your prayer becomes a delight to the lord that's why you see some people's prayer go through express road in the spirit but you you have been praying for how many months nothing is happening because your prayer is abomination to the lord but when you are upright when you are consecrated your prayer becomes a delight to god he said why you are yet speaking i will answer i will answer why you are yet speaking i will answer because your prayer is his delight does your prayer give god delight or something else oh don't pray to god if you are not ready to do his will don't pray to god if you are not ready to yield yourself to him thank you holy spirit deuteronomy 23 verse 18 we give you praise lord thank you lord blessed be your name you must not bring the wages of prostitute <laughs> this is in your bible right you must not bring the wages of prostitute whether female or male so there are male prostitutes already you know into the house of the lord your god to fulfill any vow because both are detestable to the lord your god did you understand what you just read any money stolen money money out of prostitution money gotten through ungodly means don't ever bring it to the house of god they are abomination to him revelation 21 verse 27 but nothing unclean will ever enter into the new jerusalem nor anyone who practices abomination or make it a lie you see we have a problem here and many christians still don't understand this reality the bible says in john chapter 8 verse 48 44 jesus speaking the devil is a liar and the father of it that's why the easiest sin is lying and that's why you see in 
many places where the list of unrighteousness is listed, lie always come out, perversely always come, always come out, deception always come out. Because that is who the devil is. And if by any means you ever find yourself lying or deceiving or telling half truth, you belong to the devil. And how do you expect God to bless you? This is a serious matter. One of the proof and the text of your consecration is that you have conquered lie. Take it from me. If you still have a problem with lies, you, you are not consecrated yet. You, you are not. If you still have a problem with lies, forget about the blessing of God because it is the signature that you belong to the devil. And how do you want God to be giving you his children's blessing when you are serving the devil? Psalm 139 verse 23 and 24. This is what you should do. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me the way everlasting. This is the prayer of consecration. Lord, search me. The Lord, when you pray this prayer from the depth of your heart, the Lord will help you and point you to areas of your life that you need to give to Him. Consecration. Consecration. You know, there are certain things in certain people's lives that has become their idol, like I was showing you yesterday what an idol is. And anything that takes the place of God in your life is an idol. Your car, your home, your husband, your children, your job, it becomes your idol. Alright? So, when you have an idol in your life, the first thing God, and you pray a prayer of consecration, God will begin to point you to those idols. Let me show you something about God. Hallelujah. With Father Abraham. Do you remember God is a jealous God? Answer me, child of God. Yes, sir. Is God a jealous God? Why is God jealous? Because whatever belongs to God that you give to the devil, you provoke his jealousy against you. Genesis 22, verse 2. When you read from verse 1, you hear what God said. And in verse 2, and he said, Take now thy son, thy only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon the mountains, which I will tell thee of. What is God trying to prove in Ada, Abraham? Hallelujah. <laughs> God was trying to prove whether the gift of Isaac has now taken its place in the life of Abraham. God saw the affection that Abraham had for Isaac. And he wanted to prove <laughs> whether he is still the number one in the life of Abraham. Holy Spirit, thank you, Jesus. This was the reason why he allowed the devil to afflict Job, just to prove to Job, to the devil, that Job is a consecrated man. He will not even use his mouth to curse God. Do you see again? The greatest test for Job was his mouth. Now, God said further, after Abraham has given Isaac, God told Abraham, now I know that you love me. So what was God trying to prove? God was trying to prove whether he is still the number one in the life of Abraham. Is God number one in your life? How do you know? Where are your treasure? Because where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. Isaac was a treasure to, to Abraham. Abraham gave that treasure to God. <laughs> the riches, the asset of Job were his treasure. They could not replace God in his life. Your time, your money, your asset, they are your treasure. How much of those time, how much of your resources goes to God? Then if the answer is below average, then you know you have idols. Money has become your idol. What do you use your time for? How much of your time do you spend in meditating and studying the word of God? You have time for everything, but you don't have time for God. God, you can't be blessed like that. You cannot. Thank you, Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying, child of God? Do you have time for God? Does God see your resources? How much of your time does God have? And again, I say, you have time for everything but God. You think God is just one casual person that doesn't care. How much time do you spend on every other thing but God? Repent today. He wants to bless you. All the promises are there. He 
He's not going to do anything with those promises. He gave those promises. He wants to bless you with those promises. You don't spend dollar in heaven. You need it here on earth. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? But why are you depriving yourself of the blessedness of God? You fast, you pray, you bind, you lose without consecration. Nothing is going to happen, child of God. Why don't you have a change of heart today and let your heart be completely given to God? Thank you, Jesus. Are you consecrated to the Lord? So pray the prayer of consecration that David prayed. Search me, O God, and know my heart today. Try me, O God, and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. We're going to have to stop here this morning to allow you time for you to pray and seek the face of God in consecration. And I'm going to take a lead this morning by leading you in some consecration prayers, beginning with this Psalm 139. Thank you, Jesus. Are you ready to go deeper in your consecration to the Lord, child of God? If the answer is yes, I want to lead you in prayers this time and say, Lord, search my heart. Search me, O God. Search me, O God. Search me, O God. Such me, let there be no hidden thing in me. Jesus Christ said, The prince of this world cometh to me, and he has nothing in me. There is nothing of the devil in me. Are you able to say that? Do you know Satan will attack you based on his property in, in your life? He will leverage on his property in your life. If you have envy, if you have anger, if you have malice in your heart, that becomes a bait for the devil. Everything of the devil in my life, Lord, I reject them, I renounce them today in the mighty name of Jesus. So, child of God, I'd like you to begin to pray prayer of repentance right now. The Father God, in Jesus' name, I repent from all evil. I repent from giving my heart to the enemy. I, I repent from not allowing you to be the Lord indeed of my life. I repent, oh God, and from this day, Lord, search me out. Every evil thing in me, take them out. I reject them. I renounce them in the name of Jesus. Cleanse me with the blood of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray, child of God. Open your mouth and begin to pray and say to the Lord to cleanse you inside out. Draw near to God, he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinner. and purify your heart, you double minded. Plead your case with the Lord this morning. Father, I am sorry the way I have been living my life. Lord, I am not even asking for consecration because I want to be blessed. I'm asking for consecration because that is what you demand from me. I'm not asking for consecration because I need a miracle. I'm asking for consecration because that is who I must be. I must be consecrated. So that your will can be done on earth through me as it is in heaven. I'm seeking consecration. I am consecrating myself that you may be glorified, that I may be your son and your daughter indeed. Please pray this prayer from the depth of your heart this morning. That God, I give my heart to you. I give my body, I give my soul, I give my spirit, I give all to you. I set myself apart for your use, O oh God. I'm not holding back anything. Total consecration to you, Father. Take over my entire life. Be the Lord of my life. Be the Lord of my life. Be the Lord of my life, O oh God. Be the Lord of my life. Be the Lord of my life in Jesus' name. Be the Lord of my life, O oh God. Be the Lord. Of my eye, my mouth, my ears, my nose, my heart, my body. I dedicate everything unto you by the blood of Jesus this morning. Cleanse me inside out. If there be any evil in my life, in my heart, oh God, search me out. Point me to them. Point me to the evil ways. And I will clear them with you, Father. You are the Lord of my life. 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 Cleanse me, O oh God, that your holy fire might take over. In Jesus' mighty name. I'd like to release you from here to continue your prayer of consecration on your own. We'll see you in the evening, same time every day, 7 p.m. God bless you in Jesus' name.